Well, I'm Ron uh, Luce and here with Mark Hall and want to welcome you once again to the National Youth Group Missions Night um, here. And uh, Mark, uh, you being the leader of Casting Crowns for all these years, you've been on trips all over the world. Tell these guys some of the different countries you've been to and some of your experiences. Well, uh, we are about to take our third trip into Europe, uh, played in the UK, uh, areas all around London. Uh, we've been in Denmark. We've been in whew, uh, North Korea. Uh, that's, that's an interesting one. I've uh, been there twice. We've been in Singapore. We've been uh, down into Brazil, uh, South America. Uh, we've been in South Africa as well as North Africa. So tell, tell these guys about some of the, um, the strange uh, encounters you've had, whether it's food or culture or whatever, if you've been, as you've been around the world. Well, I'm just going to tell you the problem I have with food is I'm a little picky. But I have learned uh, traveling the world that all you really need are just some little ketchup packets, bro. Because I'm an American, and if I've got two pieces of bread and some ketchup, I can survive. So that's how I make it through every. So so by about two. If it's a two week long trip, usually about uh, seven days in, I'm running low on my stash. Wow. <laughs> that's when I start to panic. So now I got a whole backpack just with ketchup in it, pretty much. Isn't that something? Yeah, man. That's a secret. Well, it's survivor uh, mode then. Yes, and it is. Any, any cultural uh, faux pas or, or funny uh, incidents you've had? Uh, you know, there's always those little things when you travel the world that I'll warn you about. Like, you know, uh, don't show the bottom of your foot to someone. Or, you know, this hand signal means this thing here, and it means another thing there. Uh, uh, we were in uh, Johannesburg, and we learned that some of our words that aren't that big a deal to say are really big deal to say there. So sometimes it's good to study the culture. Uh, when you're making language with people. Gotcha. Yeah. And what about like, um, I know you guys do concerts there, but do you ever get a chance to like see how the people are living and what are some of the things that have really moved you or touched your heart if, as you've seen and observed people from different nations around the world? Well, we've got to play in some really interesting places and, it, and it's always amazing to watch uh, believers from other countries worship. Uh, it, just, it just really opens you up to how passionate the world is for Jesus. You know, a lot of times we can think Jesus lives at our church and we're going to go on a mission trip and take Jesus somewhere else. But he's already there and he's doing some pretty amazing things. And, and what he is doing is, is, is Jesus is at work and he's inviting us to go and join in on that. And uh, some amazing moments we've had in worship. Uh, some in Scotland, I remember, it sounded like a soccer game. They're just, whoa, right in the middle of worship time and uh, such a good time to have that. But on top of that, uh, we've done a lot of youth worker training. Uh, we like to spend time with, with youth workers, usually for a day, uh, every time we're in another country, just pouring into them about small groups, about one-on-one -on -one discipleship, about how to grow uh, a biblical student ministry. Because student ministry done well is really family ministry. So you've got to look at all those areas. Uh, you obviously can't go over there and talk to them about having lock-ins uh, and going to Pizza Hut. So it's, you really got to break what student ministry really is. You got to break it down. And uh, I remember one time in Kenya, we were in uh, Nairobi. No, we were in Kasumu, and uh, we had three Maasai warriors uh, come into our youth pastor training with their long robes and their swords on the side, and, and here we are talking about discipling teenagers. Very eye-opening. Talk to the youth pastors out here. They're sitting right now with their youth group. Um, why, why should they even think about taking their group on a mission trip? You know, I, I think that, that uh, a lot of times in, your, in a youth group, your youth ministry, your students sort of develop a little personality. Uh, th this is, uh, we're the musical youth group because we have a band and uh, we sort of, we're sort of known for the band youth group or we're sort of known for, we're the jock youth group or we're the artistic youth group. And, and I think sometimes you can settle into a rut and there are people in your student ministry that have gifts and have talents that would love to do something with them. There's not really a place in the ministry to do that. But when you take that youth group and you place them in another country and suddenly uh, you're people that are normally your movers and shakers. Oh, they're at this village over here. You're at this village right here by yourself. And uh, suddenly you're having to step up and lead. There's no one else. There's not a bunch of adults to go do the job for you. It's you. And uh, I, I believe that uh, being in another country, seeing how big the world is, uh, understanding that God's given you gifts for the ministry that he has for you there, uh, it's huge, man. Big stuff. It seems like almost every album I've heard of yours, you've got a song or two about reaching out, about mm -hmm. the world, about missions. Like, what is this thing that's burning... Inside you, you could be totally have this great career here in America. You're going, you're singing about it. What? Why? You know, I, I think a large part of it, uh, other than just walking with Jesus and, and being in the Word every day, is when you go to another country, your eyes are open. Uh, I don't know. Something about living in our little towns and our little suburbs and our little worlds 
uh, you have some victories and you see God do some things, uh, but you can have a very small picture of what God really wants to do. And he really does want me to go to all the world and take the gospel to them. So anytime I can get a chance to do that, a lot of, a lot of times God's got a calling inside of you and something he's moving you to do, but you have no reference in your mind or experience to attach it to. Uh, and, and I know so many teenagers just sitting in, in Kenya uh, in this little villa that we're staying in, sitting in a circle praying. I remember seeing this girl just start crying saying, I never knew that I was called to missions until I came here. And right now, uh, she just got her pilot's license to become a missionary pilot in Alaska uh, because she sat in another country for a week and just heard God speak to her on the other side of the world. That's beautiful. So what would you say, I know you talk to kids every week, and uh, what would you say to a teenager if you could sit down with them one-on-one and say, why, why this guy or this girl watching right now should go? Well, I can talk to you as a dad. My 13-year-old son, John Michael, has been to Kenya once. Uh, my little girl Reagan has been to Rwanda uh, with us. Uh, we've got to see them uh, in North Korea uh, standing in places that you don't talk to anyone else about ever being before and my kids have been there and their eyes are open to how big the world is and what God wants to do and what he is doing. God's going to save the world but he is calling us to be a part of it and to jump in on it. And I think sometimes we, we just we look at our little church and our little youth group and we think, well, we've already got the people to do everything. He's the singer, he's the talker, she's the this, and he's the that. And there's not really any room for me. Get out of that little bubble that you're in and see what God can do with you if you give him a chance to. And I believe that'll happen. You step in, you step out of the continent and see what God's doing on the other side of the planet. That's great. Yeah. Thank you, Mark, for being here with Thanks, us today. Bro. Appreciate you, man. It's time to go change the world.